In this video on C Sharp Basics, we'll be doing a demonstration of some important concepts when using strings. So first, let's take a look at concatenation. And concatenation is where you just simply append one string to another. So let's start off with a couple of strings. We're going to do string, we'll say user name, and we'll set the initial value to Tom. And then we'll add another string, and this is going to be the greeting. We'll just say hello there. And there we go. Now, we want to concatenate these two strings so that the, the statement says hello there, Tom. So we'll do console dot right line and we're going to concatenate hello there and Tom together by doing the greeting first then we're going to just use the concatenation symbol which is just the plus sign and then we're going to say username now let's go ahead and do our console dot read line so that the application pauses and waits for us to enter something in the keyboard and let's run the application so the console window wrote, hello there, Tom, just as we anticipated. It started off by printing out the greeting first of hello there, uh, and then concatenated username to it, which was Tom. Moving on now to the two string extension method. So let's start off with a couple of decimal values. We're going to say length of one and set its initial value to some, I don't know, some random uh, decimal number here. And since this is a decimal, I need to put the M suffix at the end. We'll do decimal two and say it's length two equals some random number here. And again, use the M suffix. Now for this demonstration, let's say we want to add the two lengths together and then put that into a string variable. So let's start off with our string variable and we'll just call this total length. And we want to add length one and length two together. But this is going to confuse the C sharp compiler. As you can see, we have the red squiggly line underneath length one and length two. If I hold the mouse over the squiggly line, you can see cannot implicitly convert type decimal to string. And that's because the concatenation symbol or the plus sign is exactly the same symbol as if we wanted to add these two lengths together. And so the C sharp compiler doesn't know which one of those two operations you're trying to do. Additionally, it needs to do some sort of conversion of the numeric value to a string, and that's where we're getting the cannot implicitly convert type decimal to string. So what we need to do is convert these two values to a string at the appropriate time. But first we need to add them together. Let's try first to do two string on each one of these. So we'll do two string there and two string here. Let me go ahead and add our console dot right line. And we'll just write out the total length. And then do, of course, a console dot read line. And I'll comment out this section above here so that we don't get that written to our console window. Let's go ahead and run our application. So this is certainly not the result we were wanting. We didn't want to concatenate the two strings together. So first, let's go ahead and get rid of the two string here after each one of the lengths. And now we're back with the, the problem of it's not able to implicitly convert type decimal to string. What we can do is we can actually enclose this mathematical operator in parentheses. And those of you who took algebra probably rec recognize that when you wrap uh, an expression inside parentheses, that means that you want to first do the expression inside the parentheses. So it's going to evaluate length one plus length two before it does anything else. Now that's fine, but that's just going to give us another decimal result, right? Length one and length two will be added together to give us a decimal result. Well, one of the unique things that you can do in the C-sharp language with the parentheses is that this essentially results in some sort of variable, like a temporary variable. And because of that, after the parentheses, you can go ahead and put your extension method here. So we'll do to string. And just like that, we will now add length one and length two together as an additional operator. And then after the evaluation is completed, 
it converts the value to a string and then assigns that value to the total length variable. Now let's go ahead and save this and run this. And now we get the addition of length one to length two, and then that gets written to the total length string, and of course gets written to our console window. So this is exactly the operation that we were looking for. So now let's take a look at the escape sequence character, which as you may recall from the last video, is simply the backslash. I'm gonna do something a little fancy here. I'm gonna open up a process which allows for C-sharp applications to call into Windows to open up another application. And I'm just gonna call this my process. And I'm gonna set it to a new process. Now don't worry about the specifics here. I'm not gonna get into what, it all, what all it is that I'm doing here, but just understand that by creating this my process, I'm actually allowing myself to open another application in Windows. Now I'm gonna set in my process the start info and I'm going to go to the file name and I'm going to set the file name to MS Paint. Now MS Paint is an executable file that allows you to edit pictures, so JPEGs, GIF files, bitmaps, that sort of thing. Now let's say I want to pass into this Microsoft Paint executable the name of a picture that I want to edit. So I need to go into my process, start info, and I'm gonna pass in an arguments, and the arguments is just going to be the name of the file that I wanna edit. So we'll do C colon backslash, and I've got this file out here on my program files directory called image4.jpg. Now you can see that the C Sharp compiler is complaining about my use of backslashes. In the last video, the escape sequence character can actually turn into a single backslash if you double up the backslash character. So if I do that, now C Sharp compiler stops complaining. Now the last thing I need to do in order to go ahead and run my MS Paint application is to do my process and then call the start method. Now, if I go ahead and run this, we kind of run into a bit of a problem. It says C colon backslash program PNG was not found. Now, if you look carefully, you'll notice that it's trying to open C colon backslash program, and then there's a space inside of the string. And that's because the MS Paint application is trying to accept several different arguments separated by spaces. But here we have in one of the arguments, a space. Now the way that you solve this is by wrapping the file names inside of quotation marks when you try to pass it along to an application as an argument. So I need to wrap this file name inside of quotation marks. The way to do that is to add a backslash quotation mark and a backslash quotation mark. Now let's run this again and we have our application, our MS Paint, opening up the image file just as we expected.